Hey everybody, it's Tyler Tapper, and today we're going to be working on some chef's knives. Chef, chef knives? Chef's, chef's knives. However you say it, we're working on them. I got a lot of stuff I work on. These are destined to be gifts eventually. I wanted them to all be similar because they're all going to be for family members, so I wanted them to have the same look to them. But I also wanted to have a little bit of different differentiation between them. So I'm going to make the majority of the handles out of this curly maple, and then I'll be adding exotic hardwood segments. I cut them all to length, and then I'm putting a diagonal cut in there so I can insert the hardwood. I marked them so they would all be in a similar spot, but it's really not critical that these are exact because it's not a set. I just wanted them to look similar. The accent pieces are going to be Red Heart, Wenge, Black Palm, and Osage Orange. Took those pieces over to the belt sander since I cut them on the table saw. They weren't completely flat on that one edge. Uh, I was holding them by hand, so there's a little bit of movement. And I wanted this joint to be very tight because you'll be able to see it in the finished scale pretty easily if there's any gaps. Since they're such thin pieces, also just for the glue bond, I wanted that strength there. Making a laminate out of some veneers, and this is going to serve a couple of different purposes. The first is purely aesthetic. I like to have a little bit of pinstripe between the species of wood. Also, since these are going to be multiple pieces, I wanted to have something tying them together on the back between the handle and the top of the scale. Um, the way I oriented the grains of this wood is going to give them some extra strength so they're at 90 degrees to each other. Then that glued onto the back of the maple and the other woods in there is going to give it more stability while I'm working with it and then hopefully when it's ultimately on the knife it will too. I slid that plastic wrap in there so that the pieces of veneer don't stick to each other uh, when the glue bleeds through when they're clamped. While those are drying, I turn my attention over to the pins that are going to go through the scales. I'm using brass tube and I'm making a mosaic pin for these. There are going to be four knives, so I'm cutting four sections of this brass tube. The way I make them, I have to make them relatively short because the epoxy won't squirt reliably all the way through. Even with this length, there was a few little gaps I had to fill in after the pins were done. Uh, this I'm using TIG welding wire, just with the size of the brass tubes. These happen to fit perfectly in there with three. That was a tight fit, so they weren't going to wiggle off center when I started gluing them up. And it's also going to have a nice contrast between the black epoxy, the uh, kind of yellowish brass, and then that nice white steel. With everything cut to size, I could start mixing up the epoxy. This is a five minute epoxy, you can get it in the hardware store. The pigment I always use is, it's cheap, uh, it's readily available, you get it off eBay. Um, they're little baggies of pearl powder like you would add to automotive paint. I use a syringe and take the needle off and then uh, you basically get some of that on the little pieces of TIG wire and then you can squirt it in through both ends and when it starts coming out the other end you know that you've kind of pushed all the air out of the system. The other thing I've heard of people using for the dye is just writ dye powders like a fabric dye. Haven't tried it myself but anything that colors the epoxy should work. Coming back to the scales you can see that those veneers that I had I cut up into small pieces. Uh, this I'm putting in between the parts in between the hardwoods and the curly maple. Um, I used contrasting woods for those sheets of veneer so you'll kind of get a two pinstripe effect and then I put the lighter parts into the darker wood and the darker parts out next to the maple so it would really pop a little bit more. Put the pieces of wood on both sides of the veneer that way I could get more even pressure and really get it clamped on there well. When those had dried for a little bit, it was time to glue them into the onto the maple. I did this in two steps. Um, whenever you start getting these angles in there, it makes gluing them up a little bit tricky. You can't put a whole lot of pressure on them, otherwise they'll tend to slide off. So it's kind of a balance between getting just enough so that they stick together and not enough so the glue joint's weak. Um, you can get them to just stick together with the pressure of the glue. But I noticed some of the ones I did that on, especially on the second part, I couldn't get them to not slide. There's a couple that kind of delaminated a little bit that I had to glue back together when I cut them in half. And I'm wondering if those weren't the ones that I didn't clamp. The other kind of funny thing that those angles did was to the eye, it was hard to make sure that the two pieces of the maple were parallel. Uh, they didn't slide off relative to each other. And since these weren't a whole lot wider than what I needed them to be in the final product, I didn't need them to be pretty spot on on there. 
Um, I started clam I started putting them together and then sticking them on that flat piece of wood. That way, I uh, just maintained the th as much thickness as I could to you know, work with some relatively tight tolerances. I mean, I had some extra to play with, but not a whole lot. For a lot of things, I'm a Harbor Freight fanboy, but I would not buy a cordless drill from them. The batteries do not hold a charge overnight. What I'm trying to do here is the pins had a little bit of epoxy from the outside just for me handling them. I needed to get them back down to round and back down to the size they were before so they fit into the holes in the knives. So I'm taking it and just running some sand, chucking it up in the drill and running some sandpaper over it. At this point, the final dimensions are starting to get dialed in on the knife scale, so I am making a template on the knife blank. And it was really important where those holes fell in relation to that diagonal stripe. If they weren't centered on it or if they were off, it's I thought it would really look funny in the final knife. So I was taking a lot of care to position those exactly where I wanted them. And then I'm trimming off the top part of the blank there on the table saw. Before I put the veneer backing on these, I wanted to make sure that they were really straight after that last cut, so I'm going back on there. I marked over them with some pencil, and then I can set them on there flat, and whenever all the pencil marks are gone, I know that I've hit all the regions and that they're all level for that part that's going to hit up against the knife. This was one of those design changes that made it a little bit harder, but I think it was worth it in the finished product. The hardwood caps I'm putting on here, I would have done it while the two sides were together, um, but I didn't really know until I saw it with just the maple all the way up the knife. I didn't, didn't really like it, so I came back and trimmed them and put the caps on. So at this point, I've gone back and I have ground them flat on the back a final time. Uh, these, this veneer is actually the second time I had to do that too. I had some adhesion problems with the first one where I didn't get quite enough glue in the joints so the pieces of veneer were separating. Anyway, I went back, I got those corrected, and I'm using this tape in between, and again it's just the same reason I used that plastic wrap uh, the first time was that way these aren't going to stick together. The veneer is thin enough that if you put enough glue in the joint it will bleed through, and just that enough of that bleed through is going to make it really hard to get them unstuck. After that, it was just a matter of letting them dry till the next step. Here I'm making a final set of tape templates since the scales are at this point basically finished other than their final shaping. I'm doing it a little bit different this time. I thought I would save some time by getting these scales to the exact right size before I glued them on the knives. I thought this was going to save me some time because when you put them on the knife and then shape them, you inevitably get scuffs on the spine of the knife that you have to polish out. Uh, now, trying to avoid that, I think I took one step forward and two steps back because I ended up having to shape them anyway. I just couldn't get them lined up exactly properly. When you shape them on the knife, it takes away all of the wood right down to the steel. A little bit of the steel too, but it makes that fit really precise. At this point, it's time to attach them onto the knife and start making the holes for the pins to go through. I'm using just a regular Brad Point wood drill bit, but I am making sure that it's pressed up tightly against the backing plate because I've had a lot of instances where I'm coming and the scales are basically completely done. Most of the work's done on them anyway, and then I bust through them with the drill bit and blood a bunch of grain on the back. So you really don't want that to happen, so I'm taking all the precautions I can against it. After I have the one side done, I flip it over, position it, and then I'm putting the pins all the way through. That way they're going to be in their final alignment. This is another thing where if I shape them when they're already on the knife, I can just glue one side down and drill through and then glue the other side down. The pins go right in. I don't have to mess with having them in there. Um, anyway, so I put the pins through and then I'm marking around the edge, figuring out where I want the top of that to be. And I'm going to take it over to the belt sander to get those exactly where they need to be. Since there was quite a bit of that extra hardwood on the very top, I didn't use the belt sander to get the tops even. I came and used a handsaw just to get them the majority of the material cut off so I could shape them. So it was kind of interesting in doing four of these at the same time. Usually I don't do any I mean, production runs of anything, so I'm always just doing a one-off and it's just kind of a fun creative thing. But when you start doing the same thing, and even just four times over, um, 
you start seeing the little tricks and you do each one a little bit better and you can really progress with your skills on on whatever you're doing in a way you can't when you're just doing one at a time. The other thing I really noticed was how much time it takes to move from tool to tool and step to step. When you're just doing one, I didn't really think about it that much, but you know, you're spending a lot of time getting stuff out, putting stuff away, where in this one it's you get it out, you do it four times, and then you can move on to the next part. At this point, I still think that I'm getting these scales precisely finished before I glue them on the knife, so I'm going through getting them to the final thickness. Uh, no matter how you do it, you have to do this top part and get it finished before you glue it down on the knife. I clamp the two pieces together, that way they would be exactly the same. Heading back to these pins, I'm just using a Dremel to cut them off to size. Each pin had uh, was a knife's worth, so three pieces. Trim them down, get them ready to stick in there. Using the same kind of five minute epoxy that I was using uh, for the inside of the pins, this time of course it's not colored, but going through, getting a little bit on the pins, a little bit on the back of the scale, and then gluing it down. Uh, since they're shaped pretty closely, I can do both sides at once, but um, I mixed up only enough epoxy for one of these at a time. I definitely couldn't have gotten through all of these in five minutes, and the stress factor would have gone way up if I was trying to move that quickly, so I figured it was better to just give myself a little bit of extra time and just mix up enough for one or two at a time. Uh, the final one with the Wayne Gay insert in it definitely would have tripped me up and made the epoxy set up too quick. Um, it wasn't fitting quite right. The holes had gotten a little bit misaligned when I was drilling them, so I ended up having to hammer them on. And there was a little bit of a crescent on the bottom of one of the holes. I filled that in with epoxy just because the hole was a little bit too big on one side so I could make it fit through all the way. Uh, with all of them, I made sure to get as much of the epoxy off beforehand as possible before it cured. Here I'm setting up to grind the uh, pins flush with the handle. I like to let this stuff sit overnight because you build up a lot of heat. Even if you're careful to switch around, the five minute epoxy will feel like it's set, but it's not quite fully cured. Uh, you can blow it out and make the pins start moving if you get too much heat in there. So better to let it sit for a while. This is what I was trying to avoid when I made those scales the right size, and I just couldn't get the fitment quite right. So I came back and I ended up having to grind the back of the knife down a little bit to make them exactly flush. I was coming up on my Christmas deadline. This was actually a couple of night or two before, so I needed a finish that was going to work and that was going to work on the first time. Whenever I need that, I always go to a wipe on poly. Uh, the film thickness isn't really thick, but since these are going to be chef's knives, they're going to be getting wet, getting water on them. So I wanted something that had a physical barrier between the user and the wood on the knife. Uh, so yeah. Wipe this on. I sanded between coats just a little bit with a high grit sandpaper. I did about three or four coats on there and let them dry. Going in order, we have the Red Heart first, the Osage Orange, which is a really cool curly piece of wood, uh, the Black Palm, which I thought turned out really beautifully, and then finally the Wing K. These are some really satisfying ones to make. The curly maple really popped and you can really see the grain. The pins turned out really well. In the past, I've had issues with the parts on the inside being a little bit off center, but with how those fit in there, they just fit in perfect. Doing these over, I think I would have tried to put a piece of the pin stripe between that hardwood cap and the maple body. It was just a little bit too finicky for me to try to take on uh, with them already split down the middle. Uh, but a little detail in the end, and I, I really like how they turned out. I wanted to thank you guys for taking the time out of your day to watch my video. I do really appreciate it. If you like it, hit that like button. If you haven't already, I'd love to hit the subscribe button to get more. Uh, and also it really helps if you share these if you know anybody that would like this video. Hey everybody, I want to let you know that I'm starting up a Patreon campaign. Uh, if you guys are feeling generous, I'd love it if you'd check down the description. There's a link down in there to my Patreon page where you can donate. Otherwise, I really appreciate your continued support just by watching the videos. Thank you.